All right, you guys, it's Jill Blanchett with Green Thumb Stampers. I'm here on this wonderful Valentine's Day to show you guys part of a new suite that'll be in the online exclusives for the March 5th offering to the customers. Any demonstrators can get it now. Well, you can't get it now because it's on uh, not available status, currently unavailable, but it's coming back because... It's got to come back. Hasn't made it to our customers yet, but it's beautiful. You're going to love it. Uh, and I'm kind of over flowers right now, but it's a great flower set. I got to tell you that it's a great flower set. So um, celebration. Celebration is just like two weeks left. So if you don't have any of all the freebie things that you wanted, be sure to get your orders in. Um if you're on the fence about joining, be sure to get that sent in before the end of the month as well. The blast mat is awesome. And I did hear that it may be available with the extras. I think um, joiners, the total people joining is down. So they may release the glass mat for current um demonstrators that didn't buy one back in December, but it's not going to be released to the public for purchase. Um, and it makes sense. They kind of um, describe that as why would somebody need to join if they know that they can get the um, item down the road. So makes sense, makes sense. So I just want to tell you that, love to have you on the team uh do, 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 do. and so with that i will turn the camera down and get started on the card i'm going to show you a few different things about it and i have uh pre kind of pre-done some of it because when you see it you'll understand that ugh, we got to sit through all this no you don't i pre-did some of it so let's get started let me turn you down Oh, and I'm missing people that are coming on because I'm focused up. Christy's on, Dawn's on, Mom, Kathy. Hey, guys. All right, let's remove the spotlight. Come over here and spotlight. So now you should be seeing my desktop. Debbie's on, too. She shared. Yeah, she caught us live. Debbie Green caught us live. All right, you guys. I showed you in my little... uh live yesterday some of you have noticed that i have made it for 14 days of live videos now i apologize over and over again because i don't tell you guys when i'm going to be on because i don't really know when i'm going to be on um if i do i let you know um but most of it i'm just kind of finding stuff and then going oh hey you guys might really like to see that so i go live but this is the simply zinnia set has anybody gotten this yet? And did you like it? I know I got a bunch of demos that watch me. So um, there's a stamp set. And I used the dies to cut my flowers and did not bring it over. But I should get it. Let me just make sure I don't have it because I should bring it over to show you guys all the different things that I cut out. So you get the stamp set. This is all the sweet. And then you get the dies. And as I stated, I don't think that this cuts these out. Or um, there's another paper that's got this one. I don't think it cuts these out. But it's just gorgeous paper. So let me show you again everything real quick. All the designs, polka dots and baby zinnias, lime green. This one makes some awesome card fronts. Um, but I'm going to also tell you that I'm not exactly sure how. Nobody was injured in that crash, I promise. Um, my foot caught in the cord. Um, 
I'm not exactly sure how all this layers together. So we're going to build one and I will um, show you my thoughts on it. But um, the paper or the dyes, it does cut out the leaves. This may actually cut that out because this is 95% image. So I'll bet that that does cut out. Yes, this and I just haven't used the stamp set yet to notice what that was because I, I couldn't decide if that wasn't cutting out the paper what it cut out i didn't realize that the uh i kind of put it up here but it, it didn't fit but that would be why because it's not full size um and then it cuts out this 3b thing then there's just a whole bunch bunch of extra stuff there's leaves and then there's veins that you can put in um in the center of the leaves these make perforations and so does this into the cardstock i gotta figure out how to use that one but hey we're gonna get going show you guys all kinds of stuff that i'm gonna do oh and i did i my video yesterday might not have shown it as good as what i'm gonna get today um over here at my station i told you guys the direction the the um guy or embossing folder is kind of, I'm gonna call it directional. Go Everything goes up. So when I was trying to make, I can't remember if it was this card. And you know, you wanna run it through your machine hinge first. So you, you can't really put the, I wanted to do the whole card, the card front itself, not a layer. And so I was just struggling to figure out how to put it through there. So I opted for something different, but. This is the, I'm going to call it the debossed side where it pushes down in. And this is the embossed side where it's kind of raised up. So it's a beautiful folder. This whole suite is beautiful. I just can't get enough of it. And then it has these cute little sequins. So. I'm going to show you what I did. Now, this is a card for Saturday's class. And uh, I do have one brand new girl coming on Monday night. And so I did this card two ways. And so this, I'm going to call this my like beginner card for for her. Because um, we're going to, we're going to fussy cut out some flowers from the paper. Now the rest, I know you're thinking, what, that ain't a beginner card. That's a little, gonna be a little overwhelming for her. But in my thought process, let me get out. I, I pre-cut most of my stuff here. So let me just show you what my thought process is. I cut out a couple of the flowers, right? Let me just fold my base. So we're doing a eight and a half by five and a half base. We're just gonna fold it in half. Hey, Julie, I'm catching up on videos. I got a bunch of cards made today. Um, and then this layer can be anything to coordinate with these beautiful flowers. I just pulled out Melon Mambo and then I got the third layer of white, okay? So what I'm thinking for, her name is Kelly is that she can just put the flowers down and you see, I wanted to point out that you can even use the flowers that are only, now these two are too small, but like this one, you can use this flower that's partially there or this guy. And this one I used, I think that one I used on this card and that you just gotta hide where you cut it off. So. That's what I did here. I cut off a third leaf that was at the at the edge of the paper. But for, I'm gonna say a very new overwhelming, stop the overwhelming for like a beginner, is she could just layer these flowers and cover up that green spot like that, right? And then put in the sentiment like so, and I'm not gonna actually do it because I'm gonna show you guys the next like level. So I think that this should be great for her. 
And then she can add the, some bling. You see, I got some bling on there and I got the squirter. If she wants to try and squirt, she can squirt. And then she'll have herself a very, very pretty card, but still very basic. She said she'll, she's a pretty quick learner. She'll try anything, but I told her I didn't want to overwhelm her with stuff. So um, I jazzed this up a little bit for my um, Sunday people that don't mind overwhelming. Um, and so we'll see. So I'm going to take that off and I'm just going to then show you guys how I've done this. So I got my basic paper. Oh, one more mishap. Hang on. I forgot my stamp cleaners. Definitely will need that. So I got my paper at five and three and three quarters by fives. Where's my template? Then I made a template. Okay. Now this is taken. This might not be something everybody wants to dilly dink with. I'm not the best of measures. And if you look real close, you'll see that my widths are different. But you know what? It worked for me. But I just kind of started with the piece of paper. And I started making grid on it. And if I found my grid paper, it would have been way easier. And I could have channeled my, my uh, Julie and made it much nicer and more even. But being that it's five by three and three quarters, I had to start with a little bit wider because what I really wanted to be able to do is just slide my punch up in there and punch. And that's all I did. But you need to know like where, how to center the four of them on there. And they're about a quarter of an inch apart. Um, it was trial and error for me. Um, this one, I was able to stick the punch in, but this side, it went in too far. So, you know, you just play around with it. And that's part of the fun, you know, just playing around, figuring it out. Um, but I did make a couple extra templates, so we're all good. You guys don't have to make your own um, at class, but at home, you, you do. Sorry. Or I can make you one and send it to you if you'd let me know. Um so I've got my Melon Mambo ink. And there this is a technique, you guys. Hey, Lena and Janice and Holly. Wow, you guys are all on. So this is a technique. Probably doesn't use a blending brush, but that's what I have. And I want to call it like faux tiling. It's, it's something like that. It's like old. I haven't done it in forever. But the object is to on the cards that I've seen on before, it was that you scored like a, a, pa a pattern in, like a plaid kind of, you go at an angle and then you go back at the other angle. And then you take and you just blend up around the edges. And then that highlights where the score marks are. And then it looks like, um, like a tile floor kind of idea. I think that that's kind of what I'm trying here, but, you know, it doesn't always work out. So we're just winging it. We've got squares and we're going to blend them. We're going to attempt to, um, I'm going to attempt to make some areas like darker. And I probably need my little baby brushes. But you want to make like the corners, some of the corners a little bit darker. And I'm trying too hard here. So I'm just going to just going to go with it. So we're going to try and make. And then you want to go kind of a little bit across as well. But if you've made it this far with your template creation, good for you. Just go ahead and blend away. You've got the template down in, in yay. I'm just gonna, I'll show you what the, what the idea is. You see, you want like some of the areas darker, kind of see that. And then I'm just gonna come through and 
kind of fill in the rest of the square just to give the square an outline. And it's not, you know, oops, we need to put a little bit more on the bottom down here. I think if you um, Pinterest like faux tiling, that might bring you up all kinds of options of what I'm trying to explain here of the the corners and how they how they bring in the the different shading. So I'm going to stop right there. You get that idea, and. Uh, I then filled my squirter bottle with some water and one drop of melon mambo. Um, and I'm going to do it off to the side so that my spray does not get over everything in sight here. And it goes on to like the floor. I didn't bring over a paper pumpkin box. That's a perfect um, paint, like a spray box, I'm going to call it. And um, you you can use an old paper pumpkin box or a kit box and um, spray there. But I'm going to hold over the floor because my carpet is like gray. So any overspray isn't going to show. And, and I won't hit the wall or anything I got down there that's white. Actually, I'll hold it under my desk. And I'm just, I got it and I'm just going to spray. Oh, now I got it here. I might as well just do it. Okay, so hey, look at there. I barely, oh, but look, it did that earlier too. Watch your finger. Watch your fingers. All right, so now we've just given that a little spray. I did go get my cleaner upper mat so I can wipe up that spray. I didn't do too bad. One time, you guys, I forgot what I was making. You guys might, somebody out there might remember what I was making, but I was using a shimmery blue, I think it was a Tim Holtz kind of shimmery spray thing, right? And I was doing so good, I was mass producing. I had to have been doing a swap, so it wasn't Tim Holtz, but it was maybe our old um, shimmery powder stuff that we had. And I put it in a spray bottle and I was holding over the garbage, right? But I was holding it up too high. So I'm squirting away at it. And when I was done, you could see the whole outline of the garbage on my gray carpet because I made so much of it. I had dyed my carpet blue. So, yep, got the carpet cleaner out, got going on that as soon as I could because I didn't need that. It was pretty, but I didn't need the blue all over. So I'm going to glue these three together now. That's probably a little heavy for what you want, but you know what? Each card's going to be different because... Um, you know, we all don't aim the best with the sprayer. So sometimes it hits the card. Sometimes it goes off into thin air. Sometimes we're too close and you get big blotches. Like I say, sometimes you're too far away and you barely get anything. So I'm going to glue this on like this. And see, that's not even probably too much for a beginner as long as I just tell her to put that down and just rub the brush over it and then squirt it with the spray. If I don't put too much um, instruction on it, she may even want to try and do that. But for now, we're going to just let her do it however little or as much as she wants to. All right, so then I'm going to glue these two together. And I've taken the gorgeously made, um, obviously, this fern die from it, and I've cut that out. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to nip off this guy, round him up a little bit. Let me go ahead. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down here because I want to glue these two flowers kind of together just to hide that little spot. We can cut this off. We're not going to need all of that stem. And then just start layering and building. So put your 
like your big fern under there. And I took it right up to the edge. So maybe I gotta turn it back this way. So we're gonna put the big fern under there. Then we'll tuck this little fern in here. Stick that out. Be mindful of your the sides of your paper. And then this guy here, he might need to be nipped off because he might be just getting in my way. But I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of glue on that to get that to stick to my flower. Put a little bit of glue on this one. Just get that to stick in there where I want it. And then I cut two for um, each. So cut that guy off again. Oops, I just cut the big fern from thing. And then we'll cut the bottom off of that one. Because again, we don't need all that, but we want it to like stick out over here. So I'm gonna glue it down, way down there. Put a little bit of glue on it. Stick it down. And then now you do have this little piece that you could stick in there if you wanted. I didn't want to overdo it with the burn stuff. And so now I'm just going to put these big dimensional pieces on so that it's going to stick my ferns on. And you know what? I didn't want that one right there in the, I don't want this one in there. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to pop up the top and like the bottom. And look, I was so excited to show you how I was going to pop that up. I forgot to put the glue. Then you want to put some glue in the middle. I want to glue the middle flat and then pop up the rest of the flowers to give a little bit of dimension. Oops, let me spray one on that. And then I have um, these little labels. Uh, I forget, cause it's on my magnet board. I forget which that it comes from. There's like three this size. I don't know if it's the hippos, but we have gotten so many of these, especially in the mini catalog right now. There are so many stamp sets that have dies that go with that are just shapes and so look close at your catalog guys because you might not like the stamp set with the bird and the bird nest and all that stuff but look at the dies there's some awesome dies and i would almost be apt to think that some of those dies are going to stick around even if the stamp sets don't because they're just such versatile shapes that you know we all need shapes so this stamp here for you every step of the way comes from the potted geraniums, which is retired, but I'm using that in class as well. And so it just happened to be a nice looking saying that I thought went nicely on this look of this card and then i'm just going to put a little bit dimensional on the right hand side of that and i'm going to tuck it in here pop it up and tuck it under that that flower then i'll take i didn't use this blingy on my card because i honestly forgot that i had it and I used another bling set that I had. Anybody besides me buy bling and then 
afraid to use it all up and then you won't have it so you don't use it at all. Yeah, that's me. So I'm trying to use, I'm using stuff. That's my little thoughts, use it up. So I'm going to use, gosh, I don't know. They all look pretty. Try the orange. No, I don't think the orange is gonna go with this one. I'm gonna try the pink because I got a little more pink in here than I do. The yellow might be pretty too. And I'm using the big ones. I'm going to take a little tiny one and put it. I guess I'm going to put it down here. And so there's our first card. Um, kind of beginner, middle, middle crafter level. And as I showed you at the beginning, you don't have to do all the blending and squirting and you still have a really pretty card with just the flowers and the greens and some bling and so then I this is how I originally had made the card and then when um, Kelly said she was coming I decided I better not have one that is going to take a long time to put together and I don't know that it's going to take a long time but you know it might take longer than what some of us, even even those of us that love to do this, it might be more fussy than what you want to do. But I went ahead and did my blending brush on here again for anybody who maybe joined and didn't see that part. Lori, hi. Um, I took my little template, took my brush, and I tried to make highlighted spots that were darker, kind of filled in the whole square faintly. Then I have um, one of my squirt bottles with a drop of Melon Mambo and some water. And then I just gave it a quick spray. And then this time, I'll show you how I got one of the flowers already done. Now, I am guessing. Oh, and see, look, we got this long. Let me show you. I think this is my thought here because I didn't know what this piece of paper was all about. Let me find it real quick. This one. All these leaves. I'm thinking that kind of maybe what this thing is. This is a, obviously a stem, but maybe you're supposed to put these leaves on it and kind of jazz it up with more leaves and um, then put your flowers on it. I'm not sure because I'd like to see somebody do something with that piece and show me a good use for it. But um, I cut out, okay, let me show you what I cut out. I kind of looked at the paper as my guide. There are all my little innards or stuff. There we go. I use the paper as a guide. So I picked the color combo out of here. And if you look at the 15,000 colors that are in here, this is red, pumpkin, and melon mambo, a little bit of, um, I think it's lemon lolly and daffodil delight, or crushed curry, I think, in there. Maybe it's daffodil delight because that's the color that I used. But I think there's two colors for the innards and stuff too. But this was a good place to start. You got mambo, flamingo, and petal pink. So it's a good place to start to look to build your flower. So this one here is what I used for the base to start off with. So I got this guy's red. Then I used this fatter, weird looking flower as the second layer. And I did that one in Melon Mambo. And I'm not exactly sure if anybody has found a top, bottom, middle, whatever to know how to layer these on that base. Um, 
I don't think it probably really matters. Then this flouncier one with the skinnier die I did in pumpkin pie. And then that I just kind of maneuvered around till it looked like it was going to fit all of the um, segments between the petals. But maybe you just look at the shape of the center and put it down. But I'm not thinking that's it either because um, then they just lay on top of each other. So let me glue all that together while I'm yakking at you and just sh I'll put a little glue on the bottom of that. Let me get that in there and squeeze a little glue in there. And then this red one, I, like I say, I don't really know if there's a a right spot and a wrong spot to put it. Now, this is where my uh, wondering comes in. I'm calling this thing a crown because it kind of reminds me of a little crown. And then I've got the center, right? So if you put the center down and then you take this little crown thing and put it over the top, to me, it's it's not not working because they're like little flowers probably sticking up out of the center and so it kind of looks because it's got two colors there it kind of almost looks like it's got to be sort of layered so I then put a little crowny thing underneath and then I put that on top because it also comes with this die right here that makes those little flower like petal things that are in the crown. So then I'm gonna take those. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and do this. So I'm gonna glue down my little crowny thing. And then I'm gonna glue on, this looks like a little baby lily pad to me. I'm gonna glue that down. And I kind of did notice that it does fit in the center a little bit better if you like move it around. It it does have a you can make like a little bit of a border, a better whoops, a better border around it all. And I know that that doesn't really look right either. So then that's why I made some of these little tiny pieces. I need my pick tool. And then I'm just gluing those on the top. And totally not sure if this is how it goes. Again, I got to, one day I will be out and be on the lookout and I will see how people are putting this together. So anybody that has it and has put it together, how are you doing the centers of these flowers? I'm gonna have to look and see if Stampin' Up! has a video. Sometimes they put videos out when people are not confused, I guess, but sort of confused. Or maybe it's just me that's confused. It goes how, yeah, Dawn, you're right, it does. It goes however you wanna make it look, but. Sometimes, it, and this really doesn't look right to me either, but it's how I'm doing it. And I guess until I know any different, that's right. And so then to me, that gave it a little bit of dimension for the couple layers in there. Then I cut out I had extra from my first sample. I tried putting two sets of leaves on here and it was just way too big. So I ripped off one. So let me glue them back together. And then I'm, I just got a couple sets of leaves that we'll glue on to the back of each flower. Oops. 
And we'll put one down there. One up on that. Oops. Put one up there. And they are so big that I, I got to tuck them kind of way down there so that they don't take up the whole card. And I probably just did that with this one. I got it too close to the edge or out sticking out too far. I had a lot of practice ripping stuff apart today, so. All right, and then I'm just going to do the same as I did on the other one. Going to take these fern things. Works better if you trim from that direction. And then come back and trim off those sharp sides. We don't need all that stem. So also to help yourself conserve paper, if you know you're not going to use like half of it, then hang that half of the die off your vellum so that you don't end up wasting it because you don't need it. So why cut it if you're just going to throw it away and they're so um you know long and odd they're hard to lay out on the paper anyway so just cut off what you need and save the rest and then you'll have a better shaped piece left over i guess is what i'm trying to say your your piece that you're not gonna use is gonna have the shape more of a square or something more uniform can fit in that space rather than some little tiny thing that you're just going to try and put on the paper where this was left. And then I'm going to put this one on the bottom. Let's see. That might need to go down a little further too. I might have that guy stick him way out. Can I pop it off? Let that guy under there. We'll stick that over there. Put that like that. And then on this one, I'm going to put a little bit of dimensional. Off. I want to pop it up. Well, let's see if I can get it on there. I want to make sure I glue that burn thing on there after ripping it off. So we'll kind of stick that out like that. We'll glue that one down there, and I'm going to put the dimensional up here this time. Kind of like that. I didn't really want them in the center of the card, but like I said, these leaves stick out so far that you kind of got to work with what you got. I could stick it. Nope, I got it all done. I got to stick it over like this. Just make sure I don't go off the side of the page. I'll go up a little bit. Then we got to come in with our little piece here. Put glue on it. There we go. I'll stick that up in there. And then I have my little saying for this one. I already stamped it. And I'm going to put a little bit of dimension on this again on the right hand side. And 
And because I put my dimensional right here, I can't slide that under there. So I went under the leaves, but you can't really even tell. And so then when, now we need some bling. And this one, I'm gonna try the yellow on this one and just see what we get. Hmm. I don't know if I'm liking the yellow or not. How about let's try the orange? I think I like the orange better. I'll put the orange down here. What how many ever little blings you want? I've always heard like five, you want an odd number and you kind of want to make like a W shape, at least a little bit kind of idea like that to bring it around. But see, now I got four, so I really need to have five. So let's put another one over here. I'll call that good. Now, you know what? I want it down here. There we go. And so that is how we can create it with the die cuts. So the class girls will have their, either way they want to do it. If they want to fiddle with all the die cuts or they can fussy cut some. Uh, you guys, this is going to bug me. I got to cut that little leaf off. It just looks like a bug antenna something so there we go that is our oh yeah i was going to try green dawn but i'm hoarding the green because green is reed's favorite color so i have in my head thinking i might need to save the green for you know her in case i got to do something one day with with her so now I should be back, and I guess that's it. I got nothing else for you today except for a great big thank you for watching, commenting, sharing, um, showing up every week for me. I appreciate it, and that's it for now. If you guys have any questions about celebration, what you get, how you get it, joining the team, how to do it, what you get, what's in it for you down the road, how it works, blah, blah, blah. Give me a shout. I'm here to help. I will see you guys tomorrow for day 15. Bye, guys.